Most days are okay, tidying my desk, hoovering biscuit crumbs, deciding whether to have fruit or toast for a late breakfast. But it's like I'm missing that moment. That moment when you first hear your favorite song and you get completely lost in it. Those words or phrases or melodies just reach you. And you try to listen to it again and again to try and catch glimpses, but it's never the same. I call those magic moments. It's the time when things kind of get a little bit hazy, that sweet spot when you feel like you have purpose like writing a sonnet that perfectly encapsulates how you feel or wearing soup pajamas and dancing or lighting berry scented candles when you've had a long day my mornings go exactly how you think they would i wake up at 6 a.m and put my alarm on snooze for an hour and wind up getting only 10 minutes to get ready for my monday morning meeting i have time to drink about two sips of tea before i have to start and either the tea's too hot and you try and drink it and burn your mouth or you wait until after your meeting and you're devastated to find out how the perfect cup of tea has now gone cold. It feels like you don't really fit into your life. Like your expertise is in French literature and you fell for someone who owns a business selling lamps for cars. There have been whole nights that I've spent worrying about the state of the world, my family, my friends and asking myself, how can I use my time wisely? How can I be more productive? How can I expand my skill set? And how can I add some good to the world? And before you know it, days have gone by and all I have to show for it is worry. When I'm not working, I'm reading about race and the history of racism because black lives matter. And because people that haven't learned from history haven't had to. Sometimes it feels nice to be on the cusp of what seems like change. I miss my family every single day. And it's funny having the space to think about them like this. And sometimes I wonder where all of this love came from. And I think it happens slowly, gradually, like someone placing a cold compress on your forehead at the height of fever. Or someone putting peanut butter into your jam sandwich. It's a small, caring gesture that passes through us like a beam of sunshine. If there is one thing that I've indulged in this lockdown, it's been nostalgia. Because I spend a lot of time thinking about the past, and in particular, a lot of time thinking about people I've lost, and the bits of wisdom that I was lucky to get from them. And it always strikes me how one person can have such a profound impression on us. My great-grandma, was such a character. I remember seeing stacks of heels by the front door. Greens, pinks, blacks, literally a heel for every occasion. I don't know why I remember it so vividly, but it differs a lot from my two pairs of trainers. One for when I go out and one for every day. And trying to forget any of this is like trying to string together a sentence with no verbs or adjectives or nouns. Nietzsche said, family love is messy, clinging, and of an annoying and repetitive pattern like bad wallpaper. I look through old photos and I make playlists for every mood. And we trace my old walk to school. The sun makes the ordinary pavement look extraordinary. I remember being eight and my sister was six and my mum was walking us home from school on that same walk and there were boys from the local high school wearing the navy jumper and blue blazer started throwing stones at us and calling us packy or terrorists and 10 years later my brothers have that exact same walk to school that they've missed so much during lockdown and they wear that same navy jumper with a blue blazer a uniform that used to instill fear in me and now sparks pride my little brother got an A-star in his GCSE speaking exam. He spoke about the unfair portrayal of Muslims in the media. Life has a way of circling back, but we tend to lose ourselves in the woven, crumpled fabric that we've created. We pull and we pull until everything unravels and becomes undone. Until someone says, look at you, you're a stunning mess. You fell apart beautifully. It's 2 a.m. and you're in bed reading Emma for the billionth time and Mr Knightley is about to tell her he loves her, or whatever. 
but obviously there's going to be a big misunderstanding before things are neatly resolved. And me, I'm drinking black coffee in my blue flowery duvet, having the same Sunday night that I've had for years, listening to Dancing in the Moonlight by Top Loader, because some things don't change even in a pandemic. I realise the naivete of youth, but also the beauty and the power of it. Like a Mauritian mango in season, like melted butter on toast, like fresh, crisp, ironed sheets. I used to hate remembering everything, but now I'm scared of forgetting. My close friend Fionn said that boredom is a privilege. It's also a privilege to be able to reminisce like this, to have been able to use this time to recharge to have been able to sleep in, to not have had your life turned upside down or torn apart with worry. After all, doesn't gratefulness always come with a little bit of guilt? I hope you all stay safe, well, healthy and happy. Take care. Hey everyone. We're kind of on a sombre note right there. Oh God. Oopsie daisy. My hijab is so messy. We're good, we're good, we're good. Thanks so much for watching. As always, as always guys, I'm always gonna ask you to do this, so it'd be great if you could just do it. Oh boy, would it be great if you could just like, share and subscribe. Oh look, the sun's coming out. Golden hour. So pretty. <laughs>